Welcome to the Blue Scissors Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Blue Scissors Podcast. I'm Shannon. I'm James. I'm Jaja. And we're back giving you all our thoughts and everything happening in nerd culture. How are you guys doing? Very good. Very good. Yeah, very good. That's good. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, Jaja, what's going on over there? Not too much. I've been being a nerd as usual. Mm-hmm. Not sure if you guys are gonna like my my Ant Man review, but we'll get to it. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, wanna, I'll start off nerdy things if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, go ahead. Um, been reading a lot of Marvel comic, my Marvel comics, mm-hmm. getting ready for the Ant Man movie, um, and. Just to be transparent, I didn't actually read these stories. I actually, shout out to my guy, Comic Comics Explained on YouTube. Rob, he does a good, like, breakdown of all the stories and all the events that happened, everything important, all the tie-ins that you need to know so you don't have to read, like, five different stories just to get the whole gist mm-hmm. of what happened. So um, the stories that I read, I read um, The Infinite Crisis on Earth. So I was going through like the different big events in DC. So I, I listened to the Infinite Crisis on Earth story and how New Earth was formed and then how that went into New 52 and the Infinite Crisis story and and like Rebirth and all that stuff. And then I um, listened to a story that he did on King's New Origin that they're mm-hmm. trying to implement and it was pretty good. So I felt like going into Ant-Man, I had a pretty good understanding of Kang's character and all the nuances of what makes him such a complex and almost immortal character. Ooh, I should have so, did that. That sounds cool. Yeah, it was it was it was really enlightening. And like mm-hmm. Kang might be my in my top three definitely of Marvel mm-hmm. villains. A hundred percent. I want to say top two, but who are you wait, who else is it? Who? Oh, Doctor Doom. Okay. Doctor Doom, Kang, and Thanos right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, haven't been playing much Xbox. I did watch Made in Abyss. <gasps> oh my god, nice. guys! So I, I love this, this for both of you. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch this. I don't know. Do you want me to give my review right now? Yes. Yes, I do. So I didn't watch the second season. That's fine. I haven't you watched guys, it all either. You guys told me to watch that on sunday and i was done the whole first season and movie by tuesday wow wow it's one of those and yeah, i wanted it is get, one of those it I, is. I wanted to get into the second season but right now i don't have um what is it on it's on hulu and high dive Pause. Yeah, what uh, is what is high dive can somebody have, explain to me where this <laughs> i don't know what high dive is from? either because when i know that i look up that looks decent and i want to watch is on high dive and now i have to get high dive i'm so yeah. mad when i went to amazon prime video to watch season two it said i had to watch it with high dive and pay extra money i was like what is this i mean i it was like four dollars so whatever but like i don't know what it is i've never this is the first time i heard of it i've never heard of it it has it has all the new anime like Interesting. all the good ones <laughs> So is this just um, another streaming service for anime? Like country? Pretty much, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> just That's another. Just another? But, is it, is so it popular? I, uh, I'm assuming it has, has all the new stuff. But I, so I didn't get to the second season. And um, who who recommended the show? Was it you, Shannon? It was me. Shannon. Yeah. I have to say, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Fine. Oh, this is my type of anime. <laughs> like the world is just messed up seemingly no hope you got monsters that are like destroying humanity and the father the parents of the main pet character you don't know what happened to them so the kids trying to like that's my i love those type of animes mm-hmm. it, it, it i had not uh i don't want to say because i always compare stuff to attack on titan but it has oh. an <laughs> attack on titan feel to it mm. and Mm-hmm. Like Promise Neverland and '86, all that stuff. It mm-hmm. reminds me of, of that stuff. But More not so too Promise. It, it is. It is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But. More so Promise Neverland. I think is a is a is a good, is a good comparison. But yeah, um, I'm glad you liked I, it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is one of my new favorite animes, and I cannot wait to get to season two. Well, look at that, guys. I'm oh, two yeah. for I'm two for three. Actually, no, I've turned. So I 
I got Jossie to watch the show and he really likes it. And I got you two to watch the show. I just got to get my boyfriend to watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's but really he, good. I don't know why he doesn't want to. It is really good. Did you cry? Um. Oh, yeah. So I meant to ask you about that. What part are you talking about? <gasps> there was like Ooh. four and five different parts where I could have cried. <laughs> the part that I'm talking about is the part where... um. Oh crap. I'll be well, spoiler, skip ahead 30 seconds. The part where Reg um kills Mitty, that part. The part where Reg kills Mitty. Yes. Okay. What about when she got her arm broken? I mean, that wasn't I didn't want to cry, but if that part was that was part something. that I, I, that's the part I thought you were talking about. And then no. when she found yeah, out, I actually I thought it yeah. was that part too. What? I'm talking about when Reg kills Mitty, guys. That part was sad. There's mad sad parts when she finds out she was a stillborn. I wanted to cry for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, are, there are a bunch of sad parts. When you find out that her mom was the protege of the the um, Ozen that she meets. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. There was mad stuff that was like, it got to me. Yeah, but, but the main part that always makes me cry a lot is when Red kills Mitty. That part is sad to me. Yes, it's very sad. Yes, very sad. It's very, very sad. Um, and then but... what the in the movie, what the dad did to his daughter, wanted mm-hmm. to cry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> there's mad parts to this show that you can cry to yes so yes. so all the cries out there made it abyss but did you but you didn't cry but you felt like oh but you felt like you wanted to but was, you didn't yes, actually i felt like i could have <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man i'm so, okay so i'm glad you guys like it okay so now i have to watch tokyo Revengers, but um since you did watch it and i'm 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 happy that you watched it it's so good it's so good i'm just trying to spread the made in abyss gospel the world <laughs> The world building is really good. The storylines are good. Everything's good. It's great. It's a great show. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to finish season two. Uh, James, would you say yeah. season two is <laughs> as good as season one? Or do you say it drops off a little bit? Uh, I think it's as good. I mean, the stakes are higher because you kind of know what's going on now. So you feel like mm-hmm. you're more attached. True. True, true, true. I feel like it should be better. If it's not better, I'm going to be disappointed because like James was saying, the stakes is getting higher. She's getting deeper into mm-hmm. what she's doing. And it's... It should get really crazy, but yeah, I'm excited. And from yeah. from what I've seen, though, pretty good reviews for the second season. Yeah, well, it did, it got nominated for all those awards. I mean, it was on a couple of award categories, so I'm sure it is good. Yeah, I have to actually just finish watching it. I don't know why. Um, since it's only in sub, I can't. If I'm busy, I can't always just be. But yeah, I'm gonna watch it soon. Hopefully by next week, I have it done. We'll see. Yeah, because season three has already been announced. Ooh, season three. I wonder when that's gonna come out. Because uh, I don't even I'm know here. I don't. I don't even see it on here. I don't even know when season two came out. I had no idea that it was out until we were until we were reading through the nominations for. Um, oh, for season two started July last year, so last summer, and then it finished in September. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe by the end of this year, end of this summer, we'll have a season three. Maybe. No, Fingers that's not crossed. true. Because it's and been a couple of years since season one. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit weird for me because I had to watch season one subbed, which was fine. I loved the subs. And then the movie was in English. And I was like, uh, I, I kind of really? wanted to watch it subbed. No, I watched <laughs> yeah. the movie subbed on, they had it subbed on Hulu. I had it, I watched it in English. They got it dubbed. Oh, so. but they also have it subbed. So you could have watched the sub version too. Right. I, I don't work. like, the, I don't like the dub version. I don't like it. Yeah, I was I was too used to the sub version at that point. I'm like, yeah, what is this? <laughs> um, okay, yay! I'm glad. Um, what else did you do, Jaja? Is that it? Um, that's it. I mean, I saw Ant Man. Um, yes. Yeah, we'll get to it. We will. We will get to Ant Man. James, what about you? What have you been up to? Let me pull up my notes here. I was just looking to see if uh, the Made in Abyss manga was done. I think it is. Hmm. So season three might be the final season for sure. Um, mm. But yeah, my nerdy things. Uh, I watched Kang. Um, I you watched Kang. I, I bet, <laughs> you yeah, watched that's, what I, that's what I'm calling. No, I'm no, calling the movie's called Kang. <laughs> yeah, for a very good reason. Um, <laughs> still been playing Elden Ring. I beat a couple bosses. I think I beat like three bosses this week. What uh, bosses still, did you beat? Um, some some pretty easy ones. So there was this uh pretty easy ones. Okay. <laughs> yeah, to be a to be a mariner, it was like a, a skeleton in a boat. Oh yeah, yeah, that one is easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, beat him. Uh, man, who else did I beat? Um, Question: What what class are you playing? Like, what's your? Oh, what's samurai. Your... Yeah. Oh yeah, you're a samurai. All right. Okay. Yeah. Trying to get those blood loss be- bleeds going. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the, 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 the melee builds. 
the melee builds are a lot harder than like the magic builds that I was playing. So I know mm -hmm. I was bla blazing through some bosses, but, Me but too. I read it that's yeah. because you're magic and you can just play yeah. range. I'm but a magic samurai builder. doing that. Gotta give you your props. <laughs> yeah, magic my dodge game is pretty nice. Magic builds are amazing for people that hate conflicts like me or hard games. I'm just like, I have a great time just standing far away, casting my spells. I'm good. I always choose the wizard. Always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I beat, it was, he's called the Black Knife Assassin. Uh, his movements were pretty, pretty crazy. Um, Cause he was like slender guy, but he mm -hmm. moves like super quick. Uh, but he started off the battle like already kind of injured. So I don't know what that was about. Uh, they, oh, I think, I think I remember what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. They don't explain it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then up next, I'm about to fight this guy called Leonine Misbegotten. It's one of those like chimera things, mm -hmm. so it's like a lion head kind of with a long okay. arms. And yeah, so I'll, I'll fight him next, and then I'll fight uh, Margaret. The fell open. So, so I was are about you... to say, I think that's the first real like difficult boss, Margaret. Yeah, on that bridge yeah. The castle. Yes, yeah. I had it took me a couple tries to beat Margaret actually, or no, or did I beat him on the first? I don't remember any, no. Okay, whatever. But I have to ask you, are you following a guy, James? Or are you just playing? Uh, Kind of. So I saw this thing. It was like seven eldering bosses to fight before Margit. So mm -hmm. I've been fighting all these guys. So I beat all, all the ones that they have up there, except Leonine. So I'm going to fight him today. And mm -hmm. it said, if you can beat all these bosses, then you should be fine with Margit. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm like level 28. So I think I should be fine. Nice. I think so, too. That's high for Margit. For Mar Margit, however you say his name. Um, But yeah. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad that you're playing this game and that you like it. You see? Guys, we should all just listen to each mm -hmm. other more often when we suggest <laughs> things. Yeah, we gotta <laughs> trust each other. You guys should watch yeah. JoJo. <laughs> okay, I'll try again. I've tried to watch JoJo, and I just couldn't get into it. <laughs> I was about to get on Shannon. How many stuff we recommended to Shannon? That she I know, but Shannon? I've actually tried. I've tried to watch JoJo though. I have. It's not like I've never tried, and I've watched Tokyo Avengers a little bit because I watched it with my boyfriend a little bit. I just never finished it. So let's start oh, over. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. you're off the hook. For now, yeah, I am. I am off the hook a little bit, guys. But recommend something else. I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, James, I saw. Did you go somewhere yesterday? Did you cosplay as Tuxedo Mask? I saw you on an, yeah I saw you on, the, on the social. I, I went to uh Katsucon yesterday, so it's okay. a it's a local con out here in the DMV area. Um, so yeah, my cosplay this time was Tuxedo Mask. Uh, nice. I, I like Tuxedo Mask. He's a pretty cool guy. He um, is. But yeah, Katsucon. Oh man, it was so packed in there. It was it was crazy. Mm -hmm. I was uh, it was not. It, it took me over an hour to find parking. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it's in like a event space, but it's only hotels around there. So all the hotels close their parking lots off to just guests. So mm -hmm. then I had to park. Uh, if anyone's familiar with it, I had to park at the MGM and then walk over to the actual event space. So that was like a 25 minute walk. Oh, geez. Uh, so it, yeah, it was pretty bad. And it's in not your, like in your tuxedo mask costume. Yeah. And my on cosplay highways. with the boots on. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to cross a highway. It was crazy. a 25 minute walk. That is pretty deep, James. Yeah, I was. it was a hike. Yeah, so then by then you're like, man, I hardly even want to be here anymore. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't as enjoyable. Yeah. And uh -oh. then um since it was like so packed in there, they had the line to get into like the merchant spot where all the artists were. Mm. It was a, so it was a line to get in there. But the way they did the line is you had to snake around in like this open area. So it was like 10 rows of just up and back and up and back. And then yeah, they were just sitting there yelling like all the way down. It, it was just making it pretty hostile for you. But oh, and you had to do that twice. So you had to do the, the whole snake thing twice. Uh, then you get in there, and they like they could have just let the people in here. It wasn't that serious, but yeah, I ended up I didn't end up buying anything. Um, yeah, it was just it was just so many people. But well, yeah, I had, it, a, I had a good time. Decent. I was time. about to say, was it actually a good time? Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I'd go again, uh, or if I do, <laughs> I stay at a hotel for sure. Cause yeah, yeah, the hotel center is really nice, but yeah, if you're not a, a guest there, then good luck finding parking. So mm. parking was was the bane of my existence there. How was the cosplay over there, people? Did the thing? Yeah, it was a lot of really nice cosplays. Uh, so I I think cons are starting to turn into like kink fests or something because people all these people walking around with signs that are like pay me five dollars and I'll step on you or spit in your mouth or something like that. And I'm like, what? All right, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. But that's uh, I've never uh, seen that. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've I've seen at least four people with a sign like that. Um, so yeah, they're, they're I, enough, I guess people are really paying, yeah. <laughs> I want to start Gotta cosplaying. Be, yeah. James, do you what do you, do you keep do you keep all your cosplay costumes or like do you find that it's starting to take up space in in your home? They are starting to take up space. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, so the journal one I have hanging up for sure. Um, I did a cosplay of Kurama from Yu Yu Hakusho. Mm -hmm. Um, 
that one's still hanging up too but my tuxedo mask one well that one's in the wash right now mm. but yeah i'm not even sure what i'm gonna do with them because <laughs> yeah they're just sitting here. i have another one too that i'll probably cosplay sometime before yeah. the month ends for 28 days of black cosplay but that one's kind of just sitting in my drawer right now mm-hmm. i have to post that article but yeah you've been doing good with your cosplay stuff james it's great you started yeah, cosplaying a, oh, and now yeah. you're becoming a popular cosplayer recognized in a major yeah. anime company's article did, that's great did the I'm article sorry, come out that, did your interview come out uh not yet did you do it though you did the interview. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. did you mention the podcast what else All what did time. you talk about what did you talk what else um, did you talk about? are you allowed to say uh, you don't have to yeah well the overall topic was like being a black creator so uh, mm-hmm. as a cosplayer they call you a, a black content creator Oh, that's a, that's one of my gripes about uh, Katsukon. So like there are so many people that are content creators there. They're walking around with like full lighting setups. I'm talking like the umbrellas, the backdrops, like they're walking around with this stuff. So you got to navigate around them to get mm-hmm. anywhere. Uh, that was pretty bad. Uh, and then they're like stop in the middle of the hallway to record their TikTok content. So now every, no one can move anywhere. Yep. It was, they, they they're, they're doing with full on. <laughs> yeah, people are getting in with all this stuff. What? They're doing full on like fight scene skits like they have choreographed fight scenes and all this to record like in a hallway it's because you uh, like at a con you know there's like limited space so like yeah people will stop very... record there yeah it's it's pretty it's very impractical but... yeah 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 i don't like that yeah yeah not <laughs> yeah. Uh, my not a good time because uh yeah you can you can't really it's already hard enough to like navigate but then you got it yeah like now oh there's some tiktokers over here doing some dances or these star wars folks got a lightsaber battle that they choreographed at home and they can finally do it in person now so yeah it's uh it's crazy. Ugh, can't even go out and enjoy anything authentically anymore. Yeah, man. They the need a, a, a reserved way. corner. Yeah. yeah. Put the TikTokers in a corner somewhere and let everyone else do their thing. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I just, I seen an Instagram post the other day where they were like, oh, TikTok came from China and look what they got the Chinese we're doing dances on TikTok and look what the Chinese kids are doing and they were like disassembling and reassembling pistols it was there, and they were like they had to be no older than like 10 <laughs> not maybe <laughs> younger I was like that's pretty funny um anything else for you James nope other than, well I did plan on watching my dad the bounty hunter um I can talk about that a little bit more but it's uh it's a new show on well a movie on Netflix um with uh, black um characters so that's one of the ones I want to spotlight later on. It's called My Dad the Bounty Hunter. Okay. That sounds interesting. Um, let's see, what did I do? I've been playing Harry Potter still. Um, I had to turn it off today because it's getting a little hard now. And it's also getting a little creepy for me. Like I just did this one mission where there were a bunch of spiders everywhere in the dark. I don't like that. So I'm like, mm, okay. So I I turned it off. <laughs> um, I'll get back to it later. Um, but yeah, it is getting a lot harder now, which I don't like. So it was all fun, all fun and games, exploring Hogwarts bef- like before. But now you're like out in the Forbidden Forest in the dark doing all this scary stuff. I don't like it. Um, Have you so made it to the open, open world yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So there's like a couple like open world areas that you can explore. But I'm still on foot. Like I haven't gotten a broom or anything yet. So I feel like I'm still like early on in the game. Um, But yeah, so I've been playing that. Um, I watched Ant-Man. I saw it twice, actually um this weekend i saw it on thursday and then i saw it yesterday um no i think that's it i think i had a limited nerdy week this week oh i'm still reading that book i um, remember that book i told you about jaja uh tomorrow mm-hmm. and on tomorrow and tomorrow that's really good um for anyone looking to read like a like an actual book not a manga but um it's really good it's about these two friends these three friends i met in college or like they're lifelong friends and then they made they start this video game company um and it's just like it's it's yeah it, and it's just like go through it goes through their lives like as they're in this company like different things it's it's really cool it's a good book um it's very popular right now so I've been I'm almost done with that I think I have like a hundred pages left but it's really good um and that's it I think that's all the nerdy things I did this week but yeah uh we're gonna talk about Ant Man this week I'm very interested to see what you all thought about it but not yet we'll get to that towards the end of the podcast let's go through some things that are happening this week. Um, someone put, so getting into video game news. Wait, other, other stuff happened besides Ant-Man? Yes. I mean, not a lot, but you know, we'll get, we'll get there. Um, whoever put the multiverse story in the, the multiverse story in the, um, 
in the rundown. As soon as you put that in there, I was like, oh, yeah, I haven't heard Jada or James talk about multiverses in many, many weeks. So this makes sense to me. Have you guys been playing it? No, no. Definitely not. <laughs> and the numbers, <laughs> yeah. The numbers I'm, show I, it. So I've, I've checked in on the game just to see, like, the new stuff that they dropped. And the last time I checked, they had a new character. I forget who it was. Um, but I was like, all right, they're still pumping out content. But I guess it's not been that frequent. But I can see the numbers dropping like that. Like, yeah. Um, so I, for those, oh no, sorry. I feel like <laughs> gamers are really like finicky. Like we're like the most, the hardest consumers to please. You know what I mean? <laughs> like we get yeah. bored so easy. Yeah. So for those who don't know, um, multiverse's peak player count plummets to below one thousand, which is a that was a shocking number to read. That's really low. One thousand, and I think it was averaging. What was it averaging? Like over a hundred thousand peaking at 153,000 players during launch week for it to then drop to less than 1,000 players as of right now is like a massive drop off. It's like, yeah, that's basically, that was, that's 99%. Yeah. Yep. He said uh, close to a 99% drop uh, in the Ooh. player count. So this is the online all at once. So not just total players, but just how many are online at, at a, at a time. Yeah. Um, it's pretty Did shocking. They say why? I think it's because um, of, isn't it yeah, because of a lack of content? But, well, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, John, you kind of listed your reasons of why you aren't really playing it one more. Um, mm. For me, uh, I mean, I do have a friend that plays it pretty faithfully. Um, and he's even mentioned that, like, he'll run into the same people online multiple times to the point where he's starting to get familiar with people. So, like, sometimes if people don't want to mm. face you and are familiar with who you are, because there's so few players online, like, they'll just back out before the game even starts. So, oh, dang. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's like a chill community now like a small amount of players um especially if you're playing on like a certain coast then you'll probably be queued up with that coast's players pretty often so i can see that happening for sure um but yeah i kind of stopped playing because just because the battle pass didn't really feel rewarding it was like you had to really really grind to get hardly anything mm. and then the not that it was like too heavily monetized but it was like the things that you can get for free aren't really worth it so yeah they're trash yeah, Dang. it wasn't like an issue of like there's not enough characters or anything because I didn't even try all the characters. Um, and then they were still dropping characters after I stopped playing. So, uh, Black Adam came out for sure. Um, I think Marvel the Martian, and then yeah, that that was the last one thing. that I saw, the most recent one. Yeah, mm. but uh, I mean, I was still having fun with it. I just started playing something else. I forgot what I was playing. But... Yeah, I was about to say, is it because there are so many other better games out there now that like people just don't care about this? Maybe I don't know, but I don't I'm know part because. Of it. Part of it for me, I mean, I like they came out with like this arcade mode, one place mode, but when you went online, like as you play the, each character, they all have a different level depending on how often you use them. And then they get abilities, perks, they call it, that like make the character stronger. So you can go online and be playing like a level one character and you'll have like a level 50 uh, character that you have to fight. And it's just like not fair because they got the perks and it's it really becomes a mismatch. So mm. I was trying to build up some of my characters before going online, but that's trash. Like who want like who wants to do that? Spend all this time building up a character, take it online a couple times. Like it was it's it became like a, a chore. Mm. Yeah, I think just battle pass games are like wearing down on people because even so Call of Duty, I I've hardly been playing either. Uh, and I used to really really like Call of Duty. Um, but they actually just dropped a new season. I mean, I've watched some uh gameplay on it so i watch different content creators that do play call of duty but yeah the battle pass stuff like it just doesn't really interest me it's like i gotta put in you know 50 40 hours something like that to get the full battle pass complete and then it's like oh man this stuff isn't even worth that grind mm -hmm. so i'd rather just sit and play elden ring or ghost of tsushima or something like that yep. better game <laughs> i mean while we're, while we're pooping on games i have a similar feeling <laughs> for marvel snap now because like every season that comes out, the battle pass comes out, it's ten dollars. And like you gotta grind your way through the battle pass to get the like level fifties where you get like the uh, one of the cards. And it like if you're not playing it every day, chances are you're not gonna make it to the end unless you like, I don't know, buy whatever you need to to level up. Yeah. But it's become like the the micro transactions. And then if you don't get the cards from the season it's like you might never ever get those cards so it's kind of mm. like a weird feeling it's like do i want to put ten dollars into this game every season just to make sure i have access to all the cards like mm. yeah yeah well 
does does a game bounce back from having a thousand players online to going back up to in the hundreds of thousands, or do you think they're just done? So it's only uh, going I don't more think downhill from here. Yeah, there'll probably be some, well, so leading up to different events, so something like Evo, where there's a um, tournament before it, I'm sure people will probably hop back on and start, you know, polishing off the rust, but yeah, I think it, it'll come down to either new content being dropped or just hype building around it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, I have no excuse. Well, I was never going to, I played it, I played it and I didn't like it, so, you know. Even and I feel like it's like it one of those games that's like really technical, made for tournaments, really made for those gamers who are gonna like learn everything about this game. Cause like, yeah, like they they could they define all the terms in the game and like how like different effects stack on top of each other. And it's like really complicated if you mm-hmm. try to learn the game. And then it's really you gotta like focus on one character. Like it's really like like and like really tough. learn like, them. I would I would see casual gamers like getting fed up and being like you know, that's I'm me. over this. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> there's no chill mode, so it's not like couch mode where like you and your friend can queue up and just play against bots. Like if they had something like that, it would probably be more people still consistently mm. playing it. But yeah, they, they don't even have that. It's basically all right, get online and fight people. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. Yeah, I wouldn't like that either. After a while, well, we'll see. Interesting developments for multiverses. Kind of crazy. Let's see how it is. <laughs> Let's see if it, their their numbers change in the future. Um, and moving on to numbers, uh, Microsoft has admitted that Game Pass games, when released on Game Pass at launch, cannibalizes sales, which is not surprising to me at all. Is anyone else surprised by this? That sales <laughs> numbers drop when they release something at launch on Game Pass? <laughs> no, not at all. I don't, I don't think anybody would be surprised. It, it, it's not surprising to me. It's just a little bit confusing because I remember Phil Spencer saying a while ago that a total opposite that when games go on Game Pass, the sales boost. He and lied. We just had Hi Fi exactly. Rush that supposedly <laughs> so really good across all platforms and when it came out on Game Pass. So, yeah. I don't really understand. It makes sense to me mm-hmm. that sales would drop. I mean, I don't really understand how Game Pass works in that regard. So, like, something drops on Game Pass at launch and no one's paying full price for it. So, how is that a win? Um, I guess, how is that a win for the developers? I would imagine that them being on Game Pass, they're being paid by Microsoft. To, but how much are they game being? Game. How much I mean, are they being paid? A, I wonder. That's another question. And you know, Microsoft is super secretive about the details. Like they came out with this, but the article that it's in, there's a lot of stuff redacted. So you can't even <laughs> right. find yeah. out like the, the the meat about what's going on. It's just like just, just the headline and that's it. There is a lot of redacted stuff in here. Um, and I don't know how this is going to help them get more games on Game Pass. Like it seems like something you wouldn't want to admit. <laughs> right. I wonder if I can Google like... How much does somebody, how much does my Or, you know what I just thought about, which Mm -hmm. would be a really smart move if they're doing this? Maybe Mm -hmm. they're saying this because they don't want everybody else focusing on cloud streaming. And it's really a profitable thing that they want to keep to themselves. (laughs) Um, I mean, I don't think that Sony has any interest in the generosity of cloud gaming that. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. So... Two point five billion in payments to developer, so that works out around eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars per game to the developers to put it on Game Pass. I feel like that's not a high number, is it? No. I mean, maybe because if a game at average is seventy dollars, and you sell like, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's about that's selling like eleven thousand or like eleven twelve thousand copies. So I don't think that's worth it. I mean, it, yeah, uh, no, it's not right. More than that's... that, on Right, that number sounds low because if your game is really popular and has a potential to sell like I don't know, like a hundred thousand copies at seventy dollars, that's way more money than what they would pay you outright to put it on Game Pass at launch. I don't know. It's weird. But Or they might be gearing up to raise the price. Of Game Pass? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't be surprised by that. There has to be a reason why they put this out. Like they, they can't just be oh I'm admitting to like losing a whole bunch of money with no benefit like there has to be something that we're missing maybe maybe yeah. sony uh on the sony 
so I got the PlayStation Plus Premium. So the when they added the three tiers of uh, PlayStation Plus, uh, so I had the the highest tier one, and I don't even think it's worth it honestly because it's uh, no. I mean, the only added benefit is the cloud streaming, but I never play my PlayStation games on my PC, so it, it doesn't really make sense. Or I never play on mobile either. But yeah, so this, the second tier is probably what I'll drop to. James, when you just said that, you just made me realize I completely forgot that I was paying for that. I'm paying for the highest tier too, and I don't remember the last time I downloaded a game off of the off the library. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my my subscription to that ends in April. I will not be renewing at the highest tier. I think I'll go to the second tier because they have um a larger catalog of games that they come with free with Game Pass. So or well the PlayStation Plus. So uh this month actually they're adding Horizon Forbidden West up there. So that only, that only came out a year ago. Yeah. So there, that's actually pretty, pretty soon for them to put in, that on to their uh, free games if you're subscribed to that tier. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely keep it at the second tier because then you get access to like those sort of titles too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the highest tier, I don't need the cloud streaming from uh, PlayStation. So I think I'll pass on that one. Yeah, I think I'll drop mine down too because I don't use that at all. Like literally at, at all. So, so maybe I'll drop it as well. I mean, and... another thing to note is that they said that people who have, well, Game Pass spend more money like in game on microtransactions than people who don't. So, something to note. Mm. I can believe that's that. That's interesting metric. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Like, well, I didn't pay for this. I'm like, I don't mind paying a little extra. Yeah. So, yeah. So, the uh, PlayStation Plus Premium, that's the one that Shannon and I are talking about here. That's the $120 one per year. Uh, PlayStation Plus Extra is what I'll stick to. That's a ninety nine a year, and then PlayStation Plus Essential is uh, sixty a year, uh, and that's pretty much just gets you the, the bare bones version of. Oh, you're paying Plus. yearly. I should pay. No, you see, that's why I'm afraid of playing yearly because then if you decide you don't like it, you kind of you already paid for it. I am a month to month type of person. Be like, no, I decided that you're no longer <laughs> taking my money from me. Mm, that discount me. though. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, it does result in less, but like if you pay for it. And then you decide two months in that you don't like it, then you kind of just your hundred and twenty dollars is gone. Yeah, I did not get my one twenty worth for yeah. sure. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, let's 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 move on. Let's move on, guys. I was waiting for James to transition us, but the moment never came. Oh my bad. They caught me asleep <laughs> at the wheel. Yeah, a little bit. It's okay though. It's okay. <laughs> um so it's uh, all good. Any any other video game news that going on this week before we move on to all our TV and movie news? I don't think I don't think so. No. No. I don't, I don't I got nothing. Cool. Uh so right now, well, this is still kind of video game transferring to movies, a little bit of both. Uh so The Last of Us on HBO is far outpacing. Oh, so far, not so far. Um it's outpacing House of Dragon viewership numbers. So, um if we all remember when House of Dragon started, it was the highest viewed premiere, I think, in HBO history. Um, but I think that The Last of Us, their viewership is higher and it's growing each week. Um, and it is now more popular than House of Dragons. Is anyone surprised by this? Well, James, you didn't watch House of Dragon, really. Josh, are you surprised by this? Or does this make sense to you? Uh, I don't believe it, but yeah. Oh, you never believe the numbers. Oh, wait, James, you don't watch either show. So what do you, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. I got no uh, horse in this race. I, <laughs> I find it really, really hard to believe. I don't know why, why they're pushing this show so hard. Because it, it's just weird to me when they're like, everybody's watching. Like when Squid Games happened, I thought that was weird. Like when, when everybody's seemingly gravitating to this one show, I just think it's weird. But everybody I've talked to about it loves it. Like yeah. loves it way more than me. So maybe it's just me. But you don't believe that any show has good viewership numbers. You all think you think it's all no, a lie. I just I just think the streaming numbers are a little bit wonky. Like I don't like what's the stream? <laughs> like <laughs> um, let's look at the numbers. Um Viewers' grand total of 837 million minutes of HBO's The Last of Us between January 22nd and 27th. 837 million minutes. I wonder what that translates to per episode views. Whatever. A lot. Um, <laughs> a lot. Yes, yes, yes. Um, For sure. If episodes are like averaging an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, But yeah, Chaja doesn't believe it. I believe it though. Um, <laughs> um, the show is really good. I don't know what I don't know why you guys don't like it. 
I'm surprised that I like it, and I hate zombie shows. But meanwhile, you I guys say I didn't it. like it. I just thought it was a little slow and boring at times. I mean, yeah, it's not. I don't think it's slow the and boring. Fifth episode was so absolutely boring. amazing. Mm-hmm. The fifth, yeah, the fifth episode was absolutely like the the episode with the couple that that was uh, yeah. isolated by himself. If they would have put more like conflict with the outside world, like they went through one battle. And then got mm. to live twenty years in peace. Like I don't know if there was more <laughs> battles that they didn't show, but I just it was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that episode and episode four because both of the episodes didn't have any zombies in it. And whenever there's no zombies, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, they should there should be more episodes like that with no zombies. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll appreciate it. Um, but yeah, you guys don't watch it really, so no point. But it is doing better than House of Dragon right now. Um, moving on. Let's move on to Marvel. So, yeah. Um, Kevin Feige gave an interview uh about the future of Marvel uh earlier this week. I don't remember all the things that came out in that interview. Um, who posted that? James, was that you that put that in there? Yeah, it was a lot of things that he was about? Uh, yeah speaking about. So, um, let's see. <laughs> Loki and Secret Invasion are the only things coming to MCU. Well, the TV shows coming to MCU this calendar year. So, uh, we yeah. won't be overwhelmed with marvel shows this year there will just be those two i think that's good there's too many shows which i disagree with but oh no i agree there's a there's there are too many shows think of all the shows that came out last year that we yeah think of last year how every like couple weeks we had something to look forward to yeah but then it wasn't great (laughs) it turned out to be subpar and lackluster I, i don't think so what do you mean what show okay so think about all the shows, and I don't even know if this was all last year because it's all blurring together when stuff came out. But what came, what has come out so far? Loki. Did you watch Loki? WandaVision? Well, well yes, Loki was. With, I, Loki is one of my favorite ones. Loki is very Marvel. good. Uh huh. But yeah, but it's a lot though. Got Doctor a lot. Strange and Spider Man Homecoming. I mean, no, the movies don't count though. This is just stri- strictly. I think they're just pushing back on the shows. I think they released. We the got shows. Werewolf by Night. We had Marvel Galaxy galaxy christmas special that was amazing yeah that's true okay Come yeah, on, guys. yeah i guess you're right i guess you're right there was some there were some good things i think actually there were more good things than bad things because what were the only things i didn't like she hulk what else was bad yeah, she hulk was she hulk was one of those that i could put on the, the poop list yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i think that was it though what else didn't i like or had a strong dislike for i think that's it Thor Love and Thunder but you said the movies don't count <laughs> yeah I'm just I'm just talking about shows right now Thor Love and Thunder was absolutely <laughs> horrible um but yeah this is an example of why anyway anyway so only two yeah. shows are coming out this year as compared to like five um I think from a financial standpoint that probably makes more sense because it's not like yeah. you're gonna be grabbing new subscribers to Disney plus so like you guys pretty much know how much money Disney plus is going to be making so why spend all this money making all these new shows and you're not going to get any new revenue from it because it's going to be on a streaming service that you already have your existing customers. Like, I, I don't think anybody's waiting on season two of Loki to finally subscribe to Disney Plus because they probably already have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm very I'm very excited for season two. That's a good Loki, point. Really. Yeah. Um, um, besides the slowing down of the pacing of the shows, what else did he talk about in that article? Uh, I don't think I put that article in the rundown, actually. Um, the Marvels uh, was pushed yeah. back. So the delays, yeah. Um, delays, yes. The Marvels is it was, getting. It was originally going to be July twenty eighth, but now it's going to release on November tenth. November tenth, which is, I mean, fine. Was I super looking forward to that See, movie? No, 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 no. We're not. No, I'm mad at the delay because last year when we had the delays, we didn't even feel it because of the shows that were coming out. And now oh, that's true. We're gonna feel it. That is yeah. true. That's true. But that gives me time to read my comics, my photon yeah. comics here. Oh yeah, there you go. Ooh, nice. That's nice. That's nice dope. little plug there. Um, I wonder why it's getting pushed back. Whatever. Um, I don't care if that one gets pushed back. I'm fine with that. If it was something like Guardians 3, I would have been upset if they delayed that one because I'm very much looking forward to that movie. Um, But whatever. I can wait till November for this one. There's still yeah, a lot I'm of just... movies. There's still a lot of movies that are coming out. Yeah. Is there actually? What's coming out next? It's, Is it Guardians? Um... I think Guardians is next. Yeah, Guardians that come is out next. In March, right? Guardians, no, Guardians that's coming the, that's, out. No, that's coming that's out. That's the trailer that's out. So May. I'm assuming that's yeah. That's what's coming next. Guardians coming out in May. I think that's the next one. 
But then what comes out after that? Is that it? It was supposed to be Marvels. Oh shit. So I guess there's not a lot to <laughs> I guess there's not a lot. Never mind. <laughs> um when's Loki season two coming out? I, that's what I was gonna ask. I forget. But yeah, it didn't, didn't have be... a date inside of that article. If it's supposed to come out in 2023, I mean, when you think about where we are now, well, we're only in February, but I wonder if it's gonna come out towards the end of the year. That's I don't know. Yeah, I'll give I'll give Kevin Feige a call. Yeah, go ahead. And then what's the other <laughs> show that's coming out this year? Secret Invasion. Secret, Secret Invasion. Invasion. Okay, so that's two shows that like what you can think like six or seven or eight episodes each, probably six, knowing them. If there's, there's six, like... I'm gonna be mad. Don't don't cut back the shows and then only give me six episodes. And you gave me nine for She Hulk. And there's only so ten mad. months left. There's ten months left in the year, and these shows kind of have to be spaced out. Something has to be coming out soon. I want to say Loki, maybe, right? Soonish. Well, it's I don't know. Timeline. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I feel like Loki's the next show. I just don't remember the date that it's coming out. Yeah. Or if they announced the date. Let's pull up a phase five lineup real quick. Cause I I could have sworn that more movies were coming out this year. And I don't Yeah, so next is Guardians. It's an Echo TV show coming. It just says mid twenty twenty three. Oh Loki, no, but mid twenty twenty three. Echo got pushed though too. Echo's not coming out this year anymore. Oh. What this article's three days old and outdated already? What happened? Oh, I, I pulled up an article and it's only three days old, but it looks like it's already outdated. Yeah, because yeah, it says twenty twenty three lineup. Because Echo... anything that doesn't have a, like a specific release date, so I'm like, it's probably gonna get pushed back. Oh yeah, yeah, guys, this is gonna be a bleak year. So now that Ant Man is out, we only have Guardians coming out in May, and then yeah, Marvels is the last one of the year, which is now coming out in November. It's gonna be a. Man, I needed that Iron Heart. Yeah, Iron Heart's not coming out this year either. Agatha Coven of Chaos, which I wasn't super excited for, is not coming out this year anymore. You think it has anything to do with DC gearing up? I think they're scared of DC smoke. No, that Flash. No. That Flashpoint. Actually, I, I did the. Oh my god, Flashpoint guys! Too. We have to talk about the Flash trailer, which I know. Yeah. Let's pivot to that real quick. Real quick. I was so against the Flash movie. But the trailer actually looks really good. The I trailer like, looks. Uh... <laughs> oh, I hate that I'm about to say this, but it looks like it's gonna be phenomenal. I know, I know, and I really hate that it looks so good because I'm like, I can, <laughs> see, I can see why they didn't can it. I can see why they didn't can the movie. Mm-hmm. But, um, I really don't like myself for feeling that way. Did you see it, James? I did. Yeah, there were there are some ambitious <laughs> actors that they brought into this, so they did. I don't think you wanted. I don't think you wanted to waste their time. Right, exactly. Um, when I first saw it, I was like, "What kind of Spider-Man ripoff is this?" With your multiple versions of bringing back old Batman's and things like that, and multiversal things, but it actually looks really good. So I don't know. I don't know. I uh, and it, yeah. I was gonna say I did go over the Flashpoint story in the comics. Mm. Really, really good story. Mm. So should be interesting. Maybe after this, though, I've, maybe The Flash will just be done in DC. So maybe we can tolerate this last movie. The, the, I feel like The Flash is almost like Kang. Like, he's kind of immortal yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah, of his time true. travel abilities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've been speculating, but it seems course. like The Flash is... Yeah, he's like the anchor of the universe at this point. So uh, I don't think they can can oh. just can it. They can recast him now. Yeah. Recast, recast The Flash. Um... No, but I can see why they didn't can this movie. It actually the trailer looks really good. So we'll see if the movie actually lives up to the hype of the of the trailer. Um we'll see. I don't know. The CGI looks kind of bad though. Or like when not, does that come out? Some June? I think that yeah, that comes out in June. Yeah. Um so Wait, Mar- Marvelous was supposed to come out June or July, right? July. So... July. Mm, that's now, suspect. You think that's why they delayed it? They're, I don't know. I feel mm. like a little bit, maybe. Maybe. Ah, oh, it's gonna be a slow year for superhero stuff. Whatever. I guess we'll see. Um great year for yeah. anime. Great year for anime with freaking Attack on Titans one hour part four five special. Yeah. Let's I don't talk think we about it. I don't think we talked about that. Now <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> sorry, apologies for the pivot from 
Marvel to DC to anime back to Marvel. Whatever, it's fine. You guys will be okay. Um, how did you guys feel about that when you saw that? I forgot to put that in the in the rundown to you. That is only gonna be an hour instead of an actual like four episodes. I think that's fine. I think that's all it what, needs. They said the whole the whole thing is just gonna be one hour and then part, done? part one is gonna be like an hour movie. It's not gonna be episodic. Wait, is it this part three? No, no, like part one of this season. Cause you know, it's like or part three, yeah, part three, whatever. Part three, part four. I'm so confused now. Part oh, three wow. is gonna I didn't be, even read that. yeah. Part three is gonna be an hour, and that's it. That it's gonna be an hour special. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna come on and be like, I'm not mad about it being dragged out. Like, just give it to me when you give it to me. But at this point, it's like, what is with all of this? I don't know. I don't know. Just give so me. I the wonder. Show. I wonder if part four is also gonna be an hour. I mean, that's fine. I feel like that's all they need to do. I mean, but when you think about it, an hour is basically like three episodes smushed together into one. So whatever. They're not really doing anything. Yeah. But I'm glad they're releasing it all at once instead of dragging it out like an hour here and then like give us part four. Oh, probably like six months <clears throat> later. Another hour. Just finish it. And though. it's really not a lot left to cover. It's probably like, I want to say like two or three major battles that happened that mm. maybe four. But I don't, I don't it's like near it. the end. It's listen that. Yeah. No, it, it's at the end. <laughs> it's, it's like, give us what we want to see, but it's it's at the end. I have a question though. Did you see the Demon Slayer trailer? No. I'm behind on Demon Slayer, guys. I gotta catch up. I don't think I saw no, I definitely didn't watch the second season. Oh, Demon season... Slayer have, has some of the best animation in anime. I I feel like... What season are we on now? Are we on three? Or are you about the... to be on one? Oh, I forgot what about the start. Okay. But we're, I think it's Sword like the fourth village. arc. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'm behind, guys. I gotta catch up. I gotta catch up. Yeah, I believe it's gonna be a movie. movie. Yep, it's a movie, and then they're gonna do a season. So kind of how they did the second season, where there was like a movie, then the season. How do you guys feel about this movie and then season format that anime does sometimes? I don't know if I like, I like it. it. I don't like it when the movie, like when it goes into the season and the first couple episodes is literally just the movie again. I don't yeah, like that, that part is lame. I feel like I haven't seen that a lot though. <laughs> Didn't only I thought was that only Demon Slayer like, that did that, or do more people do that? I haven't seen the second season of Made in Abyss, but I'm hoping no, they it's not. That. It's not like that for Made in Abyss. No, because it just picks up. It that picks movie up right covered before. what happens in between season one and season two. I hope they do it like that. No, no, season two it picks up right from where the movie ends. It doesn't recap really? the movie Good. at all. Like Dragon Ball Z, they like to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't like I don't like anime movies because like what I don't like about it is that sometimes they release movies that aren't canon and sometimes they release movies that are and then it's just like how are you supposed to know what you have to watch and what you can skip because I don't care for movies that are not canon I don't care for it well if um, it's Demon Slayer I'm watching it mm, maybe but even still then I don't know Um, it has to be canon into the next season if you want me to care about it honestly otherwise what's the point but whatever um um yeah well, we need some jojo movies do we a rocky hit me up man i got some ideas for you there so there's never been a jojo movie ever not a theater release oh in theaters <clears throat> mm, okay that's what i need yeah in my life here you know i can't use my a i can't use my a-list for anime movies in the theater i think i talked about this before um oh, yeah, you did mention that. That was... and i find that to be absurd yeah that's pretty lame it is pretty lame did you guys also hear that amc is charging more now for where you where you sit which i feel like is a scam did you hear about that so which which seats there's so more? many things there's so many things that happened this week that i forgot to put in the rundown yeah um so apparently amc is going to start charging not for a-list members thankfully but um they're going to start charging more for the seat for your seat selection so i'm like, guessing which seats are more valuable to them that i don't know probably like center seats um and like the middle of the theater um probably are going to be more expensive i just find that to be a scam honestly and just like yeah. what extra value are you getting right Nothing. right mm -hmm. it just seems dumb for something that was free or like no extra charge for you to suddenly put a cost on it and i wonder how much more it's going to be it feels like a money grab to me it is a money grab it is a money grab movie theaters are becoming solely irrelevant so this is them trying to stay afloat but i don't know if that's going to help them stay afloat honestly i don't think that's the answer yeah. 
Glad I didn't have to pay any extra for my seat at Ant Man though. Nice. You guys want to get into that? Nice. Yes. So as we're here. Yes. Ant Man came out this week. Um, highly anticipated movie. First time we've seen Kang or a variant, a different variant of him from Loki. Um, what were your guys' initial thoughts of the movie? Let's hear it. All right. So my very, very first initial thought is why is this movie so dark? Like visually dark. I I could barely see anything. Really? I don't think I I don't think I had that problem. Hmm. Me neither. Yeah, it it wasn't dark. They must have needed to replace the uh, projector or something because I could hardly see anything in there. I was like, man, this is bad. That sounds like something wrong with your movie theater because I don't think I had a problem with it being too dark at all. Actually, it was very bright to me. Jaja, did you have that problem? It was. I mean. The quantum world had like a little gloomy feel to it a little bit, but there were a lot of colors and like I had no trouble seeing it. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, you should get your money back. Contact my theater. Right. Yeah, <laughs> get you your money should, back. I could hardly see anything. You should it. see it again at a different theater and then you'll know for sure. If you care enough to see it again. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know about that one. <laughs> okay, what else? What else, James? Uh I mean, I was really just waiting on Kane. The the old lady, oh, she was getting on my nerves like the whole movie. The old lady, Janet, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Janet. Because, like, you, she was being so secretive about everything at first. She was. Then everything was literally crumbling before them, and she was still being secretive. I'm like, all right, at what point are you going to tell us? Like, you're, you're dragging yeah. yourself now. Yeah, I feel like they drag King's reveal out a lot. He just kept, he bounced a lot to four different scenes, and everyone just referred to him as him. And I'm just like, all right, right. when is anybody going to say his name, or when are we going to see him? <laughs> like, I don't think we saw him until, like, an hour into the movie, I don't think. It's funny because the, the Eric Ross, Eric Boss breakdown, he's like, we see Kang in the beginning and then we don't see him until 46 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. He thought that was a disservice. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think he fulfilled a lot for the time that he was on screen. I just think that all the hinting towards him was a bit much after a while. I'm like, all right, they say him and then they cut to somebody else and they, they mention him and then they cut to somebody else and they mention him and then like, like not really mentioning him, but um, whatever. Um, Jaja, what were your thoughts on the movie? I, I would like to hear yours first. Okay. <laughs> um, so I thought the movie was okay. I don't think it was phenomenal, and I don't think it was bad. I think it was just like right in the middle. Um, I don't know why Marvel keeps doing this thing where they're over trying with the comedy. I feel like some of the comedy was a miss in this movie. Um, some of it was good, some of it was a miss. I just think that we should stop trying to be super funny all the time because it doesn't always translate well. Um, Kang, I thought Jonathan Majors was phenomenal as Kang. I thought he was really good, but I, but I think that his Thanos level performance kind of didn't fit into the overall unseriousness of Ant Man and the unseriousness and ridiculousness of Modok. <laughs> um, which I don't know. I'm trying to decide still how I feel about Modoc. I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the fence. I think I hate him. I think that's where I'm leading. Um, but yeah, but his performance is really good. But I just think that, and I, I guess it had to happen in an Ant-Man movie, but I'm kind of just like, could this just happen? I don't know. I don't know. It was just, it was good. It, I, I just feel like some of it didn't fit. The comedy didn't fit in with Kang. And then I just don't think Kang fits in with Ant-Man. Because it's Ant-Man, you know what I mean? Like, why Ant-Man has no business trying to go up against Kang. And I feel like Kang died way too easily. Luckily, like, and I was happy with the balance where, like, Kang was, like, really beating up Ant-Man at one point. And I was like, good, this yeah. is good ba- This is good character balance. But then for him to have gotten carried away by all the ants, I was just like, really? Like, you destroyed multiple timelines and civilizations and you get carried away by a bunch of ants? I don't know. It just felt like it was easy. Too easy. But... Um, overall, I didn't hate it, but it was okay. And I have more to say, but I want to talk about, I want to hear what you have to say, Jada. <laughs> Got it. Um, Did so I saw it? this movie uh-huh. <laughs> and I have to say, it's probably one of the best Marvel movies I've ever seen. Oh, uh, of course. I knew it. Jada always oh, has a complete <laughs> opposite take. It never fails. This one, this movie it was never fails. absolutely phenomenal. It never fails. I thought. I thought I mean, they did a really good job. The comedy, I thought, fit in where it fit in. Okay. Like, Ant-Man is a comedic character. He's supposed to he be is. super he is. silly. Yes. And he's with his daughter in this 
quantum realm. No one knows where you're at. Like, I could see him trying to comfort his daughter using those jokes. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't his joke. He got serious when he needed Mm -hmm. to get serious. It wasn't like Thor Love and Thunder where it was just dumb, stupid Thor. Like, he got serious when he got serious, especially at the end when homie took his daughter. Like, he was, he turned up. I thought that was great. I, um, I did write down Janet Pym annoyed the living crap out of me that she yeah, didn't tell she them was annoyed about too. Kang. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do you come out of that and not tell anybody about Kang knowing what you know? Yeah, Like, that is insane. So I yeah. thought that was a little bit of a plot hole. Um, and what else? What else? The fight scene between Kang and Ant-Man, I thought that was great because he beat the living yeah. mess out it was of good. Ant-Man. That was a good scene. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it was really good. Like I, the the way they yeah. set things up for the future and like Kang's whole story, they seem to be doing it justice. Yes, I just wasn't expecting Kang to die in this movie. I thought, well, that version of Kang, he said I wasn't. He died. Or whatever. Well, they, they He's probably he not. Died, but we didn't see a body, so. Yeah, the other variants. The other variants seem to think he's dead. I mean, if he's not dead, that'd be great. But like, he appears to be dead, and I just he think got that sent that to the cool. same place that um. The guy who plays Modoc sent to, and where Ant Man went to in the movie, the the, the um, I forgot what they call it. The no, word. the quant- like, no, this they went no, but isn't that that's where they are now though? The quantum realm is like what happens when you go subatomic. But, but remember when Ant Man has to shrink the energy source for Kang, and he jumps into that probability storm. Yeah, that's where they sent Kang. They sent Kang oh. inside the sphere. So he's inside that probability storm de- dealing with a whole bunch of different Kangs. And like the, the theory is, is that like if he is able to get out of that, he's going to be a much powerful, a much mm. more powerful version of himself because Scott Lang, you know, his whole ant thing, ants working together, like, and then them fighting for Cassie, it was easier for them to come together to achieve a common goal. But the Kangs are a whole different story. Like if he's That's able to get out of that situation, it's going to be insane. That's a good theory. I I like that. Um, but no, I I I I didn't love it, but I thought it was good. So Rotten Tomatoes. So like, I was scared at first because the critics gave this movie a rotten Rotten Tomato score, which I should never believe them anyway. But the only other Marvel movie that's gotten a rotten Rotten Tomato score is The Eternals. So I'm like, this movie is definitely not as bad as The Eternals, and I don't understand how they gave this movie a rotten Rotten Tomato score, but Thor Love and Thunder didn't get a rotten Rotten Tomato score because this movie is way, way better than Thor Love and Thunder. So I don't really understand that scaling at all. But yeah, um, I was pleasantly surprised because it was much, much better than what they were making it seem like it was. So I was just like, yeah, I don't I hated, understand. I hated people's comparison to Thor Love and Thunder and the comedy. I think it's totally different. It is totally different. Thor Love and Thunder was entirely too much. Entirely. Ent- <laughs> entirely. The whole it movie great. was a joke. Yeah, the whole movie, it was, it was just so dumb. I, um, I loved how in the end we got the ants really coming to save the day because it is an Ant-Man movie. So yeah, I love that part, that little, the smart ants. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I just thought it was too easy for, whatever. I, the, the ants were cool, but I'm just like, really? the ant, You're letting the ants carry your way? Oh, powerful conqueror. Anyway, but um, the whole movie, the Quantum Realm gave me very much a Star Wars vibe. I don't know if you, any of you got that. But like all the different kinds of aliens and like the worlds of the quantum realm just reminded me of Star Wars. The spaceships. Yeah, it reminded me of Star when they Wars were at that camp, that little lounge bar cantina. That yeah. was definitely Star Wars ish. Yeah, yeah, it was giving off a lot of Star Wars vibes. Uh, James, did you feel that way? You don't watch a lot of Star Wars stuff. <laughs> did you feel no, that way? Yeah, I did not watch Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you guys feel about Modok? Was he a hit or a miss? I couldn't take him seriously at all. He was a hit for me. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He was the co- co- comic relief most of the time. Like, Wait, I know, you... like, mm-hmm. Modoc, as we know, is super serious and dangerous. Like, we can do that version of Modoc or whatever. Or this could be a Taskmaster situation where it's just, oh, we got this character. That's so many characters. Let's throw him in this movie and throw him away. It could be that type of situation. But I think he did his job. He looked super goofy. It was hilarious. Every time he came on, he looked retarded. Like it was so funny. I thought. <laughs> James. And then at the end, when he was like, "Oh, I'm I'm an Avenger now." Like, oh, I mean that part whole, was funny. Yeah, his whole little twist of being good, I thought, was a little bit corny. She that's that's what I was talking about. With him, yeah, that's and then what all I'm of a sudden about. he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna go against Kang." Like that was a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, when I was but, making a comment to the comedy, that's really the only part I was talking about. I was like, I don't like this whole arc. It just feels silly. 
Um, yeah. James, was he a hit or a miss for you? Yeah, it was it was a miss for me. Um, ah. Yeah, he just converted <laughs> to a good guy after a, a single conversation. I was like, yeah, this is this is not it. Yeah, and I don't really understand how like we saw. I don't, I don't think that there was enough shown to make me want to believe that he'll just switch to being a good guy. Like the one part where Kang like flung him against the wall and was like, "Don't talk when I'm in the room." Like that was just one thing, but that doesn't make me feel like he wanted to just screw him over in the end and be good. I feel like there needs to be more of that for me to believe that for me to believe that and not think it was bad. But yeah, that whole arc was a little weird to me. Um, but yeah, I did like I did. His beef. Mm-hmm. What happened? Yeah, I mean, drummed up his beef with the family. Like, because, yeah. like, anybody, anytime you seen anybody in the family, it was like on site. He was like, oh, I'm going to destroy this person. But then mm-hmm. one conversation later, it's like, oh, I'll help you guys. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It was but I, do, weird. I do like what they did, though, by making Darren from the first movie Modoc. That was, that was a nice little twist. Um, But yeah, his whole arc, I, I wasn't feeling it. It was, it wasn't, which is why the movie should have been longer, guys. The movie should have been longer to build out a little bit more of these relationships. Um, the freedom fighters, I feel like they could have they could have had more in the movie to make me care about them a little more. I mean, I cared about the them a little freedom bit. Freedom fighters were awesome. I cared about them, but I feel like I could have cared about them. When more. They first met them and they were like drink the ooze, and you couldn't. Yeah. You thought they were like chanting something menacing. I thought <laughs> that was great. That was yeah. so. That was hilarious. <laughs> drink the ooze, and then they could just talk to you. I thought, and then the guy with the holes. I, yeah, I thought the jokes were really good. <laughs> like all the jokes, I don't, I can't remember a joke that I was like, yeah, that that was whack or missed. I liked all the jokes. I liked all the jokes except for the jokes involving Modok, except for at the end when he was dying. That was the only part I liked, but everything else that he was in. Mm, mm, mm. Um, what else can we talk about? I can like we talk about Cassie. I actually really enjoyed Cassie. I thought she was the most annoying character in the movie. Oh, God. Why? Because, first of all, (laughs) you're, like, mad at your dad because he's not, like, being Ant-Man every day and he's not saving the whole entire world from everything. Like, get out of here. You, like, who do you think you are? Like, this like... I, it just annoyed I, me and then she built the machine like it was nothing so what is she tony stark level genius now Reed yeah i know see that i had a problem with because like they didn't hint at in the first two ant-man movies even though she was only a kid they didn't do any hinting that she was like advanced or like super smart for her age so i don't understand how she came to build a machine that could talk to the quantum oh world. i read some <laughs> ant books and now i know how to build a quantum time machine like yeah man if you don't sit down and then she gets her suit. I'm happy she got a suit. But what's up with all these young Avengers just naturally knowing how to do everything better than their parents? It's like no, she's no, no. too inexperienced. Like she should have got in a lot more trouble no, or but difficult I, situations, I feel like. I actually think that I actually think that it showed her as kind of inexperienced. Like she didn't really know what she was doing. She wasn't overly good at any com- any kind of combat. Right. But she like, still won. In all, she never faced any real difficulties. She made it through all of that like, okay. without knowing anything. <laughs> okay, I see. I can. I see what you mean by that. I see what you mean. But I don't know. I liked Cassie. I found her to be perfectly fine. James, did you like? She, Cassie? she reminded me of um the girl from Hawkeye. I was uh, she annoyed me. <laughs> James, I do how, like how that she had like an uh somewhat of a training arc during the movie with that whole mm-hmm. jump and flick thing when yeah like she was trying to punch people and it just wasn't working. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, they gave her a little bit of a training arc. If, if she had her own movie, I don't think I would watch it or a TV show. But <laughs> I mean, yes, I mean, exactly. she's she was cool. Yeah, she's cool. No, I definitely don't think that she's one to have a solo project. But she was cool for where she is. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool to see since we like started seeing her in the first Ant Man as a little girl to like now she's like kind of trying to do her own thing. I think that was cool to see. Um, but but yeah. Uh, I was gonna go to what other character? What did we think about the actual Ant Man? He he was great. He was fine. Um, he was fine, actually. Um, a lot of people were saying that he should have died. I'm like, they're not gonna kill him in his own movie. Nobody dies in their own movie. Um, so. I thought he was great. I did notice the earpiece from early, but I had no idea what it was for. Like, I remember what looking earpiece? at him being like the ear the earpiece that he had and that that let him communicate with the ants. Oh, oh. And that's mean, why he was able to find about, the ants and all that stuff. Are you talking about Hank? You talking about Hank? Yeah, yeah. Is that oh, what? I was talking. No, oh, no I was talking you're about, talking about the new Ant Man. Well, we could talk Hank about is Hank the too. original Ant Man. Yes, he is. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it's a little confused, but but yeah, I noticed the earpiece, but I didn't put together the, how they were going to use that in the end. I thought that was really cool. He was a lot of comic relief too. He was, he was good. I enjoyed him a lot, but I always enjoy him in, in every single thing he's in. I think he does a great job um, playing Hank Pym. He's good. Uh, what did you think about Hope though? I feel like Hope was terribly underutilized in this movie. Do you feel that way? I feel like she barely did like anything. She just <laughs> cried the whole movie to her mom. Why don't you tell us things? Yeah, tell I, me, tell me. And it's just understandable because her mom was being mad sus. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just feel like she's underutilized. And even in the last movie, I felt like she was underutilized too. I feel like she's just constantly overshadowed by Scott. And since this movie is a is a duo title, again, with both of them, I just feel like for both movies being called Ant-Man and the Wasp, I just feel like it's more Ant-Man than the Wasp to me. I don't know. They should find ways to utilize her more. But I agree. Yeah. She should have had like a different, she should have had her own arc within that movie, which is another reason why the movie should have been a little longer. Two hours is not enough for Marvel movies now, guys. It's not cutting it. There's too much world, especially for the quantum. I feel like there's too much world building and care. You're introducing all these characters. You have to build them up. And with a little bit more time, could have been like two and a half hours and I would have been okay with that. Mm -hmm. Um, but what did you guys think about the two end credit scenes that we got? The first one, which showed the Council of Kings, and the other one, which was a, basically a preview to Loki season two. What did you guys think of those? Council of Kings, I liked because it, mm -hmm. it definitely showed like all, it was a stadium just full of Kings. And I was like, okay, this guy, he, he put some work in because to film all those different uh, versions of King, right. yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm definitely hyped about that. Um, so yeah. hopefully he gets to it's not even like an Avengers title it's like just a Kang movie I, I that's what I want I want a Kang movie I want a Kang movie too it is going to be an Avengers movie though Avengers Kang Dynasty so Jonathan Major should get an Oscar by the end of this <laughs> he is killing it he is like he is. from okay so I watched the last episode of Loki the day so before I. going to see mm -hmm. the movie he is so freaking good at all these different characters and they're all you can tell the difference between all of them like the the Kang that he played how like he was just like so serious but then you could see the like at the end the anger bubbling up under him and like with all the the story that I read about his his character he is very angry and like the part where he's she he yells at Janet like you don't know what I've lost like that's deep. Like when they fully go into that, hopefully they explain it good. But yeah, he that's is, mm -hmm. he is like traumatized beyond belief. Like I think that was one of my problems though. I mean, it's cool if they explain it later, but I just don't know why I was supposed to sympathize with him in this movie. Cause I don't know what he's been through. Like we at this point, we don't know anything about his background or like where he came from before this. So I'm just waiting for a little bit can of clearance. Can I give a spoiler slash theory? Yes. Ravana Renslayer. Okay. She is the love that he will never be able to have. Oh right, I I've heard about their I've heard about this. I have. Um, she's she should play a huge part in his story arc mm. or whatever. All right, well we'll see how that goes. I'm sure, but I'm just wondering when. Okay, so I mean. Other than that, the movie was good. A lot of people didn't like the movie, though. The movie's gotten a lot of mixed reactions. And by the way, that first post credit scene was like pulled straight out of the comic. Like it was a comic panel that's exactly that. Oh, scene. really? Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. And um, I thought Rama Tut looked amazing. I thought yeah. Mortis looked amazing. The mm -hmm. third one, don't know who he is. I want to yeah. say he's the Iron Lad or Scarlet Centurion. I don't know. That's what people are guessing, too. But they, they don't but really know. I, I hope he's not Iron Lad. Uh, I like I, I hope he's just like a futuristic Kang. Like I hope he's not neither of those two, but I can't wait to see yeah. where this goes. What about the second one? The second credit scene. Oh, it's a little preview for Loki. I found it, I thought it was and I thought it was interesting. So I'm looking forward to season two of Loki. They made him look a little too Frederick Douglassy for me though. I was like, is he supposed to I was, did anyone not think that right away when they saw his hair? That's that's oh, my <laughs> but I think that's what they were going for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was I was just like okay uh I thought it was Frederick Douglass and then they showed his name I was like oh it's not Frederick Douglass but why did they make him look exactly like Frederick Douglass it was a little weird to me <laughs> so uh, funny funny story 
when mm-hmm. that first that second credit credit scene came on like I want to say before the scene even came on like it was fading into the scene mm-hmm. and the movie theater reaction was like oh like I thought there was like a fight about to happen in the movie theater like you know when people just shout out oh it was so loud and sharp that like it took me out of the beginning of the scene because everybody started freaking out I'm like why, why do I, I always didn't get any get these crowds that like overdo it there was no <laughs> but, sort of reaction like that in my no, movie they theater went that insane scene insane for the second one mm. insane why because it was victor timely or because it was a I, Loki preview? The, I guess they're looking forward to loki season two i guess so and real quick after mm-hmm. i watched the last episode of season one of loki i had a little theory that i thought of that i wish i would have said the last pod before the movie or whatever um because it kind of was spoiled, like it kind of uh is leads up to the second post credit scene i'm thinking sylvie kills kang or he who remains she pushes loki back to the tva if he who remains dead, then that TVA that he was in charge of should be gone as we know it. So I'm thinking that whoever that Kang is at that TVA is the guy who started the TVA. Mm-hmm. Like when the when the TVA was first created, like we're gonna meet the Kang who created the TVA. That's what I'm I'm thinking. That's a good theory. Um, I was listening to a podcast, one of my favorite nerd podcasts, and he was uh one of the hosts on there he was talking about how they're they've been advertising kang to be this big bad and he is going to be like the big main villain for this arc for this phase but he's oh for two already because he was killed in loki and he was killed quotes again in ant-man so he just so he was making a point that he's losing too much for somebody that's supposed to be a bit like a big bad but i'm like we don't know we don't really know what's to come since there's so many variants of king but i kind of agree I mean, with him a little bit like in the comics he he loses a lot <laughs> like mm. that's the whole thing he loses and then comes back and tries to fix how he lost like that's his whole arc is he, he loses thinks about a way to win tries to go back in time to correct it and then ends up losing again <laughs> like mm. that's that's his story i can see that I can see that. I just feel like if if all we're gonna see is this Kang, different versions of Kang losing, I don't know. I want to see something different. I don't. But I don't. I mean, it's it's too early to say. But I don't know if I want to see just different versions of Kang losing all the time. I just I want to see. Mean, uh, I Rama Tut see... loses in the comics. Fantastic Four beats him, and then uh, okay. Yeah, but don't a, you think don't you, think, of King, don't you just think that's gonna get old after a little while? Just watching different versions. I mean, I don't really know how many times. So like, we're gonna see him in Loki, and I don't know after that where we're gonna see him again. So I guess we'll see. But I just don't want to keep seeing wherever he pops up. I just don't want to keep seeing him lose all the time. The Avengers should be losing. I want to see them losing all phase long up until the last movie. <laughs> I feel like the next movie he's gonna get to a point where it's gonna make it look like he's winning. But, mm-hmm. And then the third movie, you know, probably resolves that. That's, I mean, the uh, what is it? Avengers, Kang Dynasty, and then Secret Wars or something like that? No, I think Kang Dynasty is the last movie in the phase. I think Secret Wars is before that. Let me just, actually, let me look. Let me, let's, let's, let's confirm that. Yeah, if he's just out here taking the L's, I and mean, it's not really like a threat. Cause if Ant-Man can beat him, then. Exactly. I mean, Even though Ant-Man, I mean, let's not, I don't, I wouldn't say that Ant-Man beat him. People keep saying that, but Ant-Man didn't beat him. Ant Man got his butt whooped. Right, he did. Well, yeah, he did say they just both have to lose. So, yeah. But if um, Ant Man can stop him, it doesn't seem like he's much of a threat. That's true. I don't. I would like to say that Ant Man didn't stop him. He was just stuck to could, the core. That we can kind of say him. that we've already seen him win. Like we've seen He Who Remains. That's like but, the end game version of Kang, like that won. And now he's just bored. <laughs> Yeah, but like we didn't see it. We were just told about it. So I think it's different. I just don't want to. Okay. We're. I'm trying to see some Kang carnage. Oh, wait, guys. Secret Invasion is coming out in the spring. So that's right around the corner. Uh, Let's see. Loki season two is supposed to come out in the summertime. Um. Oh, and then. uh, Sorry. Uh, Across the Spider-Verse is coming out in June. It's not completely bleak, guys. Forgot all about that. Um. I'm just trying to see what the last movie is. Yeah, what comes spiders. first? What's coming first? What's coming first? Put Kang in that Spider Verse. <laughs> That'd be funny. 
Oh my god, it doesn't even go all the way to the end. Never mind. I'm not gonna find this, guys. I just want to know what comes last. I think King Dynasty is not until phase six, actually. Oh, he's yeah. spanning multiple phases? It's yeah, well, real. Thanos spanned multiple phases too, so the Infinity Saga, now we're in the Multiverse Saga, which is probably going to be another three phases, um, just like the Infinity Saga was, so I'm not surprised by that. Um, But it looks like, oh yeah, King Dynasty May 2nd, 2025. Okay, two years. So I wonder how many times in between there we're going to see Kang, because I, we know we're going to see him. Get, do we get mm -hmm. secret... Secret Invasion is, is different from Secret Secret Wars, right? Secret Invasion is the show. And that's coming out this year. Secret Wars, yeah, it's coming out. Okay, so it's Kang Dynasty first, May 2nd, 2025, and then Secret Wars comes out November 7th, 2025. So, so I'm seeing some type of scenario where in Kang Dynasty, Kang takes control. Like, it's Kang's Dynasty. Multiverse is going to collapse or become under his control. Then we get secret war wars where they all have to enter battle world and pretty much come back from that. But we're gonna see Kang on top, but he ain't gonna stay there for long, I don't think. Yeah, I'm just trying to see like in which I don't think we're gonna see Kang again for a while, guys. We're gonna see him in Loki, and if we're not supposed, are we not gonna see him again until Fantastic Four, which comes out in 2024 November? Uh, I'm trying to think of where else it makes sense for us to see him pop up, and I don't really know. In the credit scenes. And credit scenes, right? Just like Thanos. Yeah, that could be true. Could be true. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure Jonathan Majors will be booked and busy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'll pop up. Yeah, he's yeah, an expensive he's guy. So yeah, yeah. I can oh, understand sure. him not popping up for every little thing, but we're, I'm sure we're gonna get some versions of Kang who might not even look like him. That, that's a possibility that we yeah. might get versions of Kang that aren't played by Jonathan Majors. Really? You think? I mean, in the comics, they looked all different types of like mm. shades and colors. And if I was Jonathan Majors, I would say that no one else can play King but me. You, right? <laughs> yeah, and you'll have to pay me every time. Right, right. you gotta dip into take acting yeah. classes from me or something. Dip into some of those opening box office day numbers of forty six million because that's how much it got first day. Oh yeah, I was gonna. Yep. Yeah, wait, how much? Forty six million on Thursday, opening day. Uh, yep, opening day, forty six million. All right, nice. So what are we sitting at now? Today is Sunday. That's, we probably don't have those numbers yet. Um, uh, those were not in when I when I just looked. How does that compare to other opening days? Let's see. So Black Panther. Wait. This marks the third highest February opening day in history, standing behind two other superhero movies, Black Panther, the first one, at 75 million, and Deadpool, 47.3 million. Um, Quantumania also landed the highest such figure for the Ant-Man series, beating out the 2015 original, which only made 22.6 million on opening day. And the sequel, um, Ant Man and the Wasp, thirty three million on opening day. Um, Jonathan Majors, he's commanding some big figures. Yeah, it says it's yeah, eyeing an increase and, and eyeing. It's eyeing a three day opening north of a hundred million. Mm. And some people are predicting a, about one hundred thirty million over the four day President's Day holiday. Oh, yeah. I, I was planning on seeing it again. I almost went yesterday. Yeah. See it again if you can. I always recommend that movie is worth seeing again. I think um, it was good. I enjoyed it the second time as well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for like this is a good kickoff to the phase five that we are all hoping to get back into. So I'm looking forward to seeing where we go from here. Um, and I'm looking for I'm very much looking I'm looking forward to all the titles that are coming up this year. Um, unlike last year where I wasn't looking forward to a lot of things, but I am looking forward to everything coming out this year from Marvel. I'm very excited for Guardians of the Galaxy. Very excited for Loki season two. Very excited for across Spider the Spider-Verse. Yeah, across yeah, very excited for across the Spider-Verse. Excited for all that stuff. So it's gonna be a good year for Marvel, hopefully. Marvel Sony. But really Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I'm excited. So I I can't remember the last year. It wasn't a good year for Marvel. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say okay, okay. But I'm I'm confident that all the titles coming out this year are gonna be good. I it, the last couple years for Marvel have been like so so. The Eternals was bad. Didn't, didn't hated it. Shang Chi was it wasn't bad, but it was okay. <laughs> it, wasn't <laughs> it wasn't memorable. It wasn't memorable. It wasn't memorable. I, I like both of those. Oh God, you like the yeah, Eternals? I, I completely forgot that you like. I remember the Eternals, really liking Shang Chi. Yeah, no, it was good, but like it just wasn't like I don't have a desire to watch Shang Chi again right now. 
which is why like my fate my mastery watch has come to a dead halt by the time i got up to oh, phase man. four it did i was like i don't want to watch anything in phase four over again right now um but no shang chi was not bad it was just okay and i just don't want to watch it again right now um what else was bad thor horrible um what else was just okay in in this phase this last phase um what other movies were there Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was good, but was disappointing a little bit, ultimately. Um, what else? I can't remember. I can't remember. But it wasn't a super memorable phase overall. So we'll see. We'll see where we go from here. We're about to blast off right now. I think so. I think so. Um, any other thoughts about Ant-Man before we wrap up? Um, no, I think we covered. Yeah, covered I think we're all. good. All right. Well, everyone, if you've watched Ant Man this month and want to give us your thoughts on the movies, do you disagree with us or do you agree with most of what we're saying? Let us know in the comments. Uh, as always, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Blades Nerds, send us an email, bladesnerds at gmail.com, follow us on TikTok, bladesnerds underscore pod. I'm all over the place. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and rate, review, and subscribe on your podcast listening app of choice. As always, I'm Shannon. I'm James. Jaja. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Peace.